Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev bringing you another video, and this is all about how I passed the 70 768 developing SQL data models exam. Uh, there are a few important points. The first one being the most important, I do not endorse exam dumps in any way, shape or form. I study for these exams myself. I take them in an exam environment and pass them. I am not a fan of exam dumps. I wish people would stop publishing them online and I wish people would stop using them as it damages the credentials. Uh, but I will save my rant there for another video. This certification also retires on the 31st of January 2021. Uh, so due to the current situation, Microsoft has extended the uh, retirement date uh, for this particular exam until next year. I also cannot reveal any specifics um, about what I was asked on the exam or give details of any questions that were asked. So. As part of taking any Microsoft certification, you do have to sign a non-disclosure agreement, uh, so you will not give any details of what was actually on the exam. You can't copy questions, you can't give them to friends, you can't reveal them anywhere. So we'll have a look at the skills measured, and you can further break this down if you download the exam skills outline from the Microsoft website and I will put a link to that in the description uh, and you'll notice also with the percentages there within a range and if you go for the top range it, does, it adds up to above a hundred percent so it's just an indication of the amount of questions you will get in this area uh, so the first one is to be able to design a multi dimensional business intelligence semantic model um, so that makes up about a quarter of the exam design a tabular BI semantic model so in SQL Server analysis services uh, there is effectively two sub products or two semantic models that we can design we can go down the multi-dimensional route or the tabular route and I will do videos in the near future comparing the two uh, we can also, uh, also part of the skills measured was the ability to de develop queries using both MDX and DAX. Uh, so MDX is used in multidimensional, uh, although it can apply to tabular models as well. Uh, and then DAX, which we'll know if we've ever worked with Power BI or Power Pivot in Excel. Uh, DAX is what we use to actually create our measures or our calculated columns. Uh, and, and the big part of this exam, which is one area that uh, I didn't feel particularly strong in as a developer, uh, is configuring and maintaining SQL Server analysis services. Um, so whenever I work with a product, I always know how to, to monitor and how the product should be set up and how it should be performing. Um, but part of this certification really does do a deep dive into how you should configure and maintain SQL Server analysis services, what you should look for to make sure it's running correctly, how you can set it up to meet different requirements that you are given within the certification. The structure of the exam is you get two hours. Uh, you do get a bit more time, but that's generally to read things like the non-disclosure agreement. And you can also give feedback on the questions. If you feel a question wasn't structured well or it didn't give enough information, you can actually feed that information back to Microsoft. In fact, going through this exam, the, the first one I've ever seen this available on is you can actually flag a question and then once you finish, once you've finished your two hours time, you get about 10 minutes at the end of it where you can send specific details to say, I don't like this question because of this. Or you could feedback positively as well. You could say, I do like this question. There are three sections of questions. Uh, they were broken down into yes or no scenarios. Uh, I was given a scenario uh, and then a solution, and it was just simply 
did this meet the requirements? There was also a section of multiple choice with some drag and drop in the correct order of actions you'd perform. Uh, and then a case study as well. And actually, I forgot the question. The number of questions was actually 46. And I'd done 42 questions um, and I'd gone through them again. Uh, I'd gone over my answers again. Uh, and then I forgot the last section was actually the case studies. And I don't think they give you that specific structure in that order every time. Um, I had it before where I've, in a previous certification, where the, the case studies were the start and then you went on to the, the multiple choice. So they might not be in that order if you take this particular certification. What's important as well, um, and I think this is relatively new, I say relatively new, it could have been around for a couple of years, is that once you complete a section, so if you do the yes or no, the multiple choice or the case studies, you are then locking in your answers. You cannot go back to that section. And that does make it a bit trickier because the one thing with these um, exams and one, one tip I will say is if you don't know the answer to a certain question or you're not 100% sure, always flag it to come back to, but keep it in your mind. You actually get a little um, pad that you can make a note of things on. And there may be a reference in an, another question that could help you with that answer. Um, so if you're unsure of anything, make sure you always flag those questions. Uh, and of course, the pass mark is 700 out of 1,000. Now, it's never been revealed how Microsoft actually scores the points for each question. As I understand it, each question would be worth a certain amount of points, but that's never revealed to yourself. Uh, and I think I've even heard that some questions are not worth anything. They're just for research purposes. And 700 doesn't actually equate to 70%, uh, which is a tricky concept to get your, your head round. But you may get questions that are very high value and again you won't know this information versus questions that are low value so you could get 70% of the individual questions correct but not pass and then you could get lower you could get 65% of the individual questions correct and still pass so that's something that Microsoft has never revealed and it it's quite good in a way because it, it does really test your knowledge and the one benefit of that is it does make you focus on each question. Um, I know exams in the past where I know things are worth five points I'm going to spend more of my time focusing on those than questions that are worth one point. So I'm going to go through uh, some of the resources that I used for this certificate. In fact, all of the resources I use. So when I start studying for a certification, I like to do some research about what resources are available. And I'll generally make a plan to work through the resources in a set order. Um, the one thing, uh, so edX courses is where I started off. So they have a course both on multidimensional and tabular. And if you're not familiar with edX, it's completely free. Um, so that's a major benefit of that. It's all done online. You just sign up to the course. Some of the courses can be archived, but you can still do them. And then some will be removed from their website eventually. Um, but that gives you, I find with the edX courses, it definitely gives you a good introduction. Microsoft Docs. Uh, again, online, pretty intense. I did spend a lot of time on Microsoft Docs looking at the nitty gritty details. They do have some tutorials on there that you can work through. Um, and it's really good because the projects that you actually download give you save points. So if there's something you're particularly struggling with, um, you can also, you can just inst install the next lesson. Uh, and just continue and then refer back to that later. Uh, the BSI tabular model is a Microsoft book. Um, so I did enjoy working through that. So that covered tabular modeling, uh, went on to cover some DAX basics as well, uh, and also how we would 
determine hardware requirements for a tabular model if we were starting to design one uh, and then also how we'd maintain that um, and monitor our tabular model as well. The definitive guide to DAX I can't speak highly enough of it's one of the best books that I've ever been through um, I used the second edition I think it's now in its third edition so definitely if you're interested in tabular modeling or power bi or power pivot definitely get your hands on the definitive guide to DAX and it will be a book I can see now will stay on your shelf for a very long time I can't see DAX going anywhere any anytime soon um, so it's definitely a must-have book um, and I actually it can get quite complex it starts off very relatively simple um, much like the DAX language itself you you start using it you can create these basic measures and basic columns and you think this is relatively easy but then once you get into the complex uh, the complexities of DAX um, you s it is a very steep learning curve I used expert cube development uh, to focus on the multi-dimensional side of things so I worked through that book and it, again I can say that was another very good book I think uh, the the books focusing on the multi-dimensional side tend to be a bit older now particularly with the move to Azure um, so only analysis uh, only tabular really exists in the Azure world we can use multi-dimensional but we'd have to set up a virtual machine for that um, so most has shifted towards this tabular model uh, a lot of people would consider tabular the easier model and it certainly is to get a proof of concept off the ground but there are definitely benefits to multi-dimensional and I think Microsoft have said that they're definitely going to keep the two running alongside each other for the near future because I know there's a lot of existing large cubes out there and the interesting thing about multi-dimensional and tabular is it's not very easy to convert one to the other you can't do that at the click of a button it requires extensive planning and almost redevelopment to move from one to the other another book was uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 MDX step-by-step -step. a very old book now you know 12 years old um, but it's a very good book it really got me into MDX um, and I found it very enjoyable to work through uh, in all honesty MDX with SAS 2012 cookbook so cookbooks uh, are great if you're quite familiar with the product and want to know sort of more advanced ways to do things so cookbooks will give you recipes of scenarios that people have really come across and what they've used in those situations and it's great because you you learn that the way that people advanced users have done thing or experts in their field and then you can save those queries for future use so always remember to keep any advanced query or anything you think might be beneficial in future online somewhere and you can even call on that resource within within work uh, and last of all the 7768 training kit I'm not a huge fan of the recent training kits, particularly the SQL Server 2016 ones. I thought the 2012 versions were a lot better, um, but I definitely did go through that. And what I should mention is the training kit is also the last thing that I ever go through. I use that as a knowledge check, so I make sure I can blast the training kit relatively easy. Uh, I understand everything in there it does provide a lot of links particularly in this case um, to some Microsoft doc websites or some other blogs that experts within analysis services um, have have done um, yes yeah, so that's always a last step for me uh, and one thing I would mention about that is I break that down into further competencies so once I'm working through the training kit I've got my breakdown of the skills measured and what I will do is take everything I work through within that training kit and create my own questions or create my own competencies and make sure I can come back to them the next day and I still understand that information because I think it's very easy to 
go through a book or an online tutorial and everything works perfectly um, but it's not really applicable to the real world we come across these scenarios where we get these error messages or something isn't working correctly and we have no idea why um, so I also use the training kit to test what happens if I go down different routes uh, and along with the other resources as well so rather than following step by step I test what would happen if I didn't go down that route what if I change the multi-dimensional expression slightly what if I change the DAX formula slightly what would happen uh, some further resources that I used and these are pretty advanced um, particularly around multi-dimensional these are mainly focusing on um, so there's a performance guide and the operations guide and that really is um, they are advanced they really do get into the nitty-gritty of configuring and maintaining analysis services in various situations so that's not only something you can use for this certification but something you could probably refer back to if you were ever designing a multi-dimensional model there's a lot of information in there there's a lot of testing being done uh, practice tests I use measure up I usually go for the download version um, you can get a 30 day and 60 day version uh, 30 days the cheapest 60 day middle and then the download version is actually the most expensive uh, I always prefer to go with the download version because th there isn't a time limit on that I have it on my local machine and I can go through those exams as much as I want uh, so some advice from me uh, make sure you know the exam topics inside out that's generally a given and as I mentioned with the training kit create your own competencies as you're working through there as you're maybe creating a project um, in SQL Server data tools make sure you understand what all the properties mean make sure you understand the next steps create a list of those competencies and I think I created something ridiculous there was well over a hundred competencies that I made a list of that I had to know and then you can use those to make up your own questions you'll find when you take uh, a lot of the Microsoft certifications or even if you've just taken one or two once you're working through the training material you kind of get a feel for that would actually make quite an interesting question and it's important that you can make up your own questions um, and and that will help you to build up that knowledge and finally my score I got 880 out of a thousand I'm yet to get into the the 900 but uh, a pass is a pass right uh, what I'm particularly pleased with with this certification is I got a relatively even spread so among the four main exam to topics they were all around the 80% mark when I've done certifications in the past I've been particularly strong in some areas but then my other areas have been quite weak so I've got sort of like 95% in key areas and then other scores around the 60% or 50% mark hope you have enjoyed that video let me know in the comments what certifications are you planning on taking and your thoughts on the video thank you bye bye